Welcome, young Padawan. The power of Blender is a pathway to many abilities, some considered to be unnatural. Hey everybody, my name is Cedric and welcome to this exciting May the Fourth special tutorial. Happy May the Fourth, everybody! I'm a nerd! Hey everybody, my name is Cedric. Sorry for that. Um, so yeah, today we're gonna make hyperspace inside Blender, inside Eevee actually, um, real time, uh, animated completely automatically. It looks funky, it looks nice, it's full, fully procedural, and we're gonna quickly get into it on how to make it. Let's get started. So, I'm starting up with an empty Blender scene, I already deleted everything we don't need. Um, so the first thing we want to add is a uh, cylinder. Uh, just a simple cylinder and we're going to our properties here down below uh, And we want to cap fill type nothing if you don't see this menu anymore You can just go into edit mode and delete those faces, right? Um, next thing we want to do we go into edit mode uh, and we go to face selection uh, We press F3 and we type in flip normals uh, And then if we really quickly check our normals over here, so we press um Let's see here, where is it? Where are you? Where are you hiding? Oh, phase orientation, there we go. Um, we want the inside to be blue, right? So that, that's just to uh, make sure there's nothing funky going on inside your scene, because we want to see the inside. Um, all right, cool. So we go back and turn that off. Uh, now we want to rotate uh, uh, our tube uh, flat, there we go. We want to press Ctrl A and apply the rotation, right? Um, and now we want to kind of scale it up. Um, I scaled it up by a factor of four, but it kind of depends on your scene, the size of things. If you have bigger ships, you know, you want to make the tube a little bit bigger. Like, it, it kind of depends, but uh, I, I made it like eight meters by eight meters. Uh, and then I want to, the length, I want to increase by a hundred fold. So I'm just going to scale it on the uh, X axis by 100 so we have a long tube um, and if you have an issue with like um, not seeing the far end of the tube you can go uh, in your end menu uh, on the right here if you press n um, let me also quickly put on screen cost keys uh, in your view you can set the uh, view clip to 10,000 meters instead of 1000 meters and then you'll see a whole lot of farther so now we just want to shade smooth this uh, and then we can already go into shading uh, we kind of want to move ourselves inside the tube uh, and to make things a little bit easier I am going to add a camera and I'm going to press ctrl alt zero So we kind of have th this view of inside the tube right and we can always default to the camera to see how it looks Next I want to go into rendered view uh, Make sure that you're in Eevee and next we want to go to our world settings and set our color to black So because space is dark, right? <laughs> Uh, next thing, I want to select my cylinder and just give it a new material. So the first thing I want to do is delete the default principal BSDF that was added. Uh, just delete that. And then go into shader and add an emission shader. So it's just going to be a simple emission shader. Uh, it's also going to render pretty quickly, so that's very nice. And to that emission shader, we want to add a noise texture. So we're going to add a very simple noise texture to the factor of the emission color. And we can already add a conv converter, a converter, <laughs> color ramp. My English is fantastic today. Uh, and we're just gonna scale up the the um, contrast, let's say, the black a little bit. So we can just see a little bit better what's going on here, right? Um, and we probably want to scale down our uh, noise texture a little bit. Uh, until we get some nice detail here and you want to add a little bit of detail but not too much the look of the hyperspace within Star Wars kind of changes from movie to movie or series from series so you can kind of play with it a little bit and kind of fine-tune the look that you want um, for your Star Wars vessel um, next with the noise texture I want to press ctrl T uh, with Node Wrangler enabled this uh, automatically adds the mapping and uh, texture coordinate nodes and what the nice thing that they added to the mapping node is that we can separately add factors to the location, rotation, and scale. So we can automatically animate them, right? 
So first we want to kind of get the look already there somewhat, right? So first we're going to play with the X scale a little bit um, and maybe turn it up. So we get like more, like you can see if you turn it all the way up, you get more an even distribution of this noise, right? Um, but we kind of want to bring it to a point and we kind of also want to play with the scale of the noise texture here that we get a, a, a kind of satisfying look um, on where all these details go, right? Um, and secondly, we want to already play a little bit with the color ramp and add a third color. And we're going to add like a bluish... Uh, again, this is a little bit taste, a little bit like how, how you want to look. Um, but the, the mostly they use a something between cyan and blue like the, this uh, this nice color here uh, and we can get pretty saturated uh, and we do want to change the linear in the color ramp to B spline because that makes the transitions between the colors a little bit better right and then we can just kind of push uh, maybe the darks a little bit um, one thing I do want to add is another note here uh, another color and put this all the way to black and so that we kind of push this these black spots a little bit better. And this already looks pretty nice, right? Um, now we can push the emission a little bit, uh, let's say to two. Again, something that looks good, something that you like, right? All right, and this already doesn't look bad. So a thing that happens with the hyperspace cylinder, it, that there's some kind of twist to it, so everything is kind of also rotating. And I first thought of just rotating the um, cylinder, but that didn't look quite right, and I did want to make everything in within the shader. So I came up with a cooler effect. So we're gonna add a gradient texture. So under texture, we're gonna add a gradient, and we can press Control Shift Click to preview that, and we can see it already goes from dark, uh, from uh, black to white, right? So as we can see here, it, it goes throughout the entire object from black to white in a linear fashion. So that's all fine and dandy. Uh, and now we want to add a converter, combine X, Y, Z. I want to put this in between and we want to rotate the X axis. So um, we're gonna add a gradient texture um, to the X uh, rotation of the rotation vector in here, right? And then if we preview this, there's not much happening. Why? Because now um, the gradient texture goes from zero to one. So it rotates it from zero to one degree and one degree is not a lot. So what we're gonna do is add a converter math node in between. And we're just gonna multiply it by a pretty big factor until we kind of see this, um, until we see this rotation happening. So first I was weirded out of how the rotation was happening because it rotates more on the top than on the bottom. And then it got to me, like, I'm using the generated texture coordinate and that always, like, um, starts at the, the left top, um, the left top front corner. Uh, and that's not what we want. So we need to change the texture coordinates to the object. And now we see that it rotates around the center more, right? So now if we, um, like, if we put this into a low, uh, almost to zero, it goes straight. And then if we pump it up, it spirals more. So again, you can have like different looks for this. You don't, you don't even have to approach the Star Wars one. Although, yeah, we kind of want to have a, um, a spiral that kind of looks a little bit like this. Uh, and that looks nice. So there we go. Um, now kind of do want to change some settings again. Uh, you can play around. I, I want to make the X scale. And now you can really see what, what settings do. You want to play a little bit with the X scale. Uh, you want to play with the noise texture to make everything like a little bit more detailed or to put more clouds or less clouds. You can play with the detail. You can put in a lot of detail in here. Um, it really depends on your taste. I mean, like, even within Star Wars, they went a lot of different directions with it. Um, so I'm going for something like this. Uh, lower the rotation a little bit. Again, I say it's like a personal tasting. Now we want to add the automatic um, animation to it, though. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to add an input value and within that, we're gonna press hashtag frame. What this will do, it'll turn purple. And once you press space, you will see that this value changes. Uh, and what this shows is actually the current frame the timeline is on. 
And if you want to see what's happening, we can go here, drag in another uh, window here and change this to timeline. And then we can see here the timeline uh, just moving. And we see that this number is just the frame that it's currently on. And we can use that value to change values um, over the time within the shader. And this will actually work great in Eevee and it's amazing to work with. So let me just create a little bit more space, uh, remove the timeline again. Uh, and I want to add a converter combine XYZ again. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I want to add this value to the X axis and put this on the location node. And now uh, we get a flickering light show, which uh, we don't want. So it's now moving um, the whole texture by one unit, which is the entire object, every frame. And because we don't want that, we want to add a converter moth. Uh, and I want to add a divide. And I want to set this to a pretty high number, let's say 30. Um, and now we see it moving nice and smoothly. Uh, we can lower this number. We, of course, want it to be a little bit quicker because they are moving to hyperspace. Uh, maybe not even put that high of a number. Let's say 4.5. That kind of works nice. We can kind of move the camera around a little bit. You don't want to move outside of the tube. I mean, you can. Uh, also looks kind of weird, but hey, inside the tube, we now have this nice hyperspace look, right? And it rotates nicely. It kind of, yeah, it looks like it's vanishing somewhere. That's very nice. And we only need to add one more thing to make this really stand out. Because now the hyperspace kind of ends in a black hole, which we don't really want. So, uh, we're gonna press space. And there's a couple ways to do this. You basically want to add an object. It doesn't really matter what object. I, I like to use a sphere, I don't know why. Um, that encompasses the entire tube. And I wanna put it, um, let's, let's go to our view here so you see what's happening. And I want to put it at the end of the tube here. So just move it by the x-axis. And I want to make sure it just overlaps uh, the tube. Then I can add a mirror modifier, select the tube, and then uh, on the x-axis, and it should add uh, a sphere to the other end. So now we have a sphere uh, at the end of our tunnel. Um, it's still black. So we just add a new uh, material, and we're just going to call this uh, white emission. Also, we're going to call the material of our tube um, hyperspace. Uh, select our sphere again. And we basically just want to switch our principal BSDF to emission, and then pump up the strength to like 3 or something. Alright, this looks all fine and dandy, but it kind of doesn't look super cool, um, but Luckily, we can enable one more feature, go into the render properties and enable bloom, right? And not too much has happened, but now if you pump up this emission node, you can see that actually this becomes a glowing end of the tunnel. Now it kind of looks a little bit too whitish. Uh, a thing you can do is just color pick a color uh, within um, the hyperspace, select the same color and make it brighter again. Maybe fine tune that color a little bit. You pump even the brightness a little bit more. And there we go. Uh, we can even like uh, pump up the emission maybe. Uh, from from here on out, it's it's really tweaking and really seeing what you like. I can maybe uh, push the white here a little bit. Uh, going back to our camera view, and now this this looks super awesome, <laughs> right? Um, now it really depends on how you want to make it look like if you want this sphere to be I think it's a little bit too much sign in there. Um, it's really like checking what works and what doesn't. Um, and like, uh, you know, whatever adds to the flavor, right? I think I think I, I like it around strength around 200 and then play around to the color until it blends in somewhat nicely like this. Uh, another thing you could do is um, maybe, you know, extend the the pipe even more or, you know, just, uh, you know, scale it down a little bit so it's a little bit thinner um, as long as everything fits inside of it. You don't want this sphere to be too big. You kind of want to make it look like everything is conver converging to that point, right? Uh, so here you have it, a nice hyperspace effect.
So with this effect, you can do all kind of crazy stuff. Like you can make a Lego X-Wing fly off towards Alderaan or wherever it's going. Um, but yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, you can change the colors. I played around with it a bit. Um, you can even change a lot of the parameters to make it look nothing like Star Wars if you want to have your own hyperspace effect, um, your own worm travel, light speed, whatever you know floats your sci-fi boat. Of course, like always, I want to thank all my Patreons, uh, and I want to especially thank my Sir Knights, with a special shout-out, so a shout-out to Misplaced Shadow. Sir Misplaced Shadow. Thanks for um, being a Sir Knight on the Patreon. If you want to join the Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash bandit or follow the link down below. Um, we also have a Discord channel, if you want to join that, um, add some suggestions, I do listen to suggestions. If you want to uh, have have a talk, if you want to have feedback, if you want to, you know, get some tips and tricks or share some tips and tricks with other people, um, you can always join the Discord. The link is down below, uh, and you can always follow me at, at Genting Gent on Twitter, where I rant about stuff and all that good, <laughs> good stuff. By the way, if you want to download the shader, you can follow the Gumroad link down below. Um, it's download for free. If you're can't be bothered to make it yourself, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a happy May the 4th. And I'm just gonna binge watch all of these Star Wars movies right now. So see you later.